Hello again all you transporters. We're again here in central Ohio outside of Columbus heading east on 33 and we find ourselves in a very lovely Freightliner platform and this is a perfect time to talk to you about diesel fuel tanks. Now this is a diesel unit and most diesels, Freightliner or anybody else, you're going to find a fuel tank. This particular one though, there's two, two things you're going to find. This is a fuel tank, you're going to find one with saddle tanks. Now saddle tanks can be great big monstrous things, 150 to 200 gallons apiece, and uh, they're also referred to as California tanks. This is the cap, the fuel cap, and it'll tell you right on there what your capacity is. So this tank right here, right here, is a 50 U.S. gallons, 189 liters in Canada. And it says, oh, here you go, warning. Fill to no more than 95% liquid capacity. And man, they mean this. Now, I talked about this once before, uh, but where that neck is down here on the fuel tank, where the thing first shuts off, you can't fill that any more than that because these diesels, a lot of times, recycle the fuel from the engine and it goes back into the tank hot. Diesel fuel has an extremely high expansion rate. If that tank is over that neck, you will expand the cold fuel from the ground in that tank. When that hot fuel comes back in and expands it, your diesel is going to want to squirt out of that cap like crazy in just bucketfuls. There's no way at that point of stopping it. The oh, damage has been done. DEF, diesel emissions fuel, that uh, you cannot let that run out. There's a gauge on the newer diesels. They claim it's $1,200 to start that fuel, that truck back up again if you run the DEF out. All they're doing is running urea or bleach through the system so that the carbon doesn't stick in the engine. I sort of object to all that because once you clean the filters, the screening system, uh, they say it's worse pollution than if you just ran the damn diesel and corrected the exhaust by design. Unrelated, that is the fuel filter right there. And you can see how clear that fuel is. All right, now why they put it right here next to behind the tire, I'll never know. Because you hit a piece of wood or other tire or something, it's going to take that fuel filter out. But Let's talk about the thing I stopped to talk to you about. This particular truck has dual tanks, so left and right. Now, when you have dual tanks, you pick these units up with a quarter of a tank of fuel, and you drop them off with a quarter of a tank of fuel. Now, that all sounds kind of fine, because uh, you're only going to put whatever you use. Not true, because these two tanks have a bypass hose that runs underneath the truck from one tank to another and it keeps the two tanks at the same level. Now, when I say level, that means that it only keeps the tanks at a level if the truck is sitting at a level. You have to pay attention when you are delivering this truck as to what level it's sitting at because if it's at the level, well, there's a fuel gauge on one tank, usually. I've only seen a couple that were on both tanks. Now this one's a little hard to tell on because of all the chrome and fancy stuff that you got up here. But as you look at the top of that tank on either side, one side or the other is going to have a little sensor on the top and it's going to be a fuel gauge. And that is usually the tank that you'll pay the most attention to. Now, that fuel gauge, if the truck is sitting, the fuel gauge is on this side, on the driver's side of this one. You can't see it, but I just looked behind that panel and it's back there. But if you're sitting so that the truck is leaning away from this fuel, fuel tank with the gauge on it, that tank's going to read almost empty because the fuel on this side is all going to run to the other tank. 
if it's in reverse and you can be clever enough to park this truck so that it's leaning towards this driver tank that tank's going to be a third full and way over the quarter that you have to deliver it but a lot of the people inspecting the units they're aware of that and they move it to a level spot so you'll get caught trying to cheat them out of fuel the problem is if you're trying to gauge a quarter of a tank on level ground with dual tanks because of the bypass uh, you can throw away 10 to 20 gallons trying to get this thing to the gauges above a quarter you can throw that away and 20 gallons times three is you know sixty dollars and uh, if you can throw away sixty dollars four or five times a week buddy you're you're you know you're wasting a whole payday so this is critical now the other thing to worry about is from this tank to the other tank on the other side which are usually the same size not always but anyway there is a bypass hose that runs to keep those two tanks level but on new vehicles I especially found this out on tractor trailers with great big huge 300 gallons of fuel they will there's a valve under there somewhere that I've never found that you can turn that bypass off and not use the tank without the gauge it's, it's bone dry or you know within just a couple of gallons the bad part is if you don't know this going in you're gonna put a hundred dollars worth of fuel in this truck half in the left tank half in the right tank and the uh, company will tell you to do that never fuel one tank at a time but if that second saddle tank is shut off you're throwing 50 gallons away because the truck will never suck it down you'll run out of fuel from the other tank only having fifty dollars worth of fuel you just gave fifty dollars worth of fuel away in the saddle tank so when you pick that vehicle up and you notice it has dual tanks you need to look at the gas gauge it should say one quarter then you go down and find the tank left or right that has the gauge on it take a real good flashlight and look down into the tank and you'll be able to see the level of the fuel in the tank through that uh, fuel cap and check to see that both tanks are at the same level if they're not if one of those tanks is dry and one is half full or quarter full that valve is shut off and you you don't want to favor that empty tank you want to favor the tank with the fuel in it and the gauge there's a little gauge and two wires coming off the top that's the tank you want to favor to run that truck and that the gauge is what they're going to read by when you deliver anyway so if that valve is shut off and I still like I said I've never found it but I'm not real big on crawling under these trucks just for fun and opening that valve because I don't care as long as I have a tank to use but you can give away a ton of fuel on every single truck with dual tanks so you check the level check the level of the tanks and check to see which one is the gauge that's the one you're gonna go by and like I say if they're not even levels and the truck's sitting in level ground one of those tanks is shut off so you can put all the fuel in it you want some of them you can put 150 gallons of fuel in there times three dollars a gallon it's 450 bucks that you've given away so it's it's serious business after a dual tank um, just be careful that uh, easy to get screwed on fuel now while I've got you here and I've got time left on this particular chapter you're looking at this truck thinking wow that baby's way off the ground so it's good clear road clearance not true as you walk down through here look at that exhaust pipe this is the exhaust pipe for the engine that baby's only a foot off the ground so that is your road clearance the foot but it also sticks out of the structure so if you're sneaking up on a curb you've got another three inches less that you can travel before you hit that exhaust the exhaust sticks out it's very visible if you hit that and bend it up that's uh, damage on you this is the exhaust pipe for the generator now look at that baby sticking out eight inches from the 
cab and it's a foot and a half off the ground but it's behind the rear wheel so as you're going in and out of a mall turning a corner this thing ends up one inch off the ground or two you'll hit that and drive it up into the uh, cargo bay and have a dent or a scratch or a bend in the pipe so these are things to consider when you walk around this particular one has a hitch already built on because it's a real heavy duty one but let's think about this you see the ball on the bottom now as I back up anything behind this rear axle is called the butt so look at the length of that unit behind the rear axle as you start to go that ball is only a foot and a quarter maybe 13 inches off the ground as you go through a driveway or a gas station in a, in a mall or whatever and you dip down that ball is going to go slamming into the pavement so it's a good idea that they have it on there it's heavy duty but man you're in trouble you have no clearance thank heavens that it tilts up here that wasn't always the way a lot of the old ones went straight across and you would smash this ass in trying to get out of a driveway or get trapped in a driveway I've had them where they high side in a big dip like a hurricane drainage thing they'll high side on this trailer hitch and the front tires the rear tires aren't even touching the ground and it takes two wreckers about twelve hundred dollars two wreckers to lift it up and get it off from there safely uh, I really sound like a terrible critic, but these are just things that have happened to me. It happens. you got to be careful, and there's just little things you need to look out for. But, beautiful unit, beautiful day, and we're off to North Carolina.